Hello everyone, my name is Deckerlink, the trained unprofessional, and welcome back to Blackgate. My fucking camera keeps moving around all the time, doesn't it? I keep trying to get it closer to me so I don't have to keep yelling to make sure you hear me! And uh, that way you can get a better voice quality, and at the same time, hopefully a better picture quality. I don't know. Uh, right now it's literally just sitting on a, like a box on my fucking desk, because I did have it on a tripod sitting on the table, on the desk, but it was way the fuck, it was too tall. So I'd have to stretch my shit out, and now I can kind of relax, and this feels nice. On the last episode, Vincent was kind of being a douche canoe, and on this episode, I'm feeling kind of sick. I ate uh, some spaghetti that I believe to be have been dirty. Uh, I've already been in and out of the bathroom a lot, uh, so I don't know how this episode's gonna go. But I need to record stuff today. I only have a couple of days a week to do it, so I'm gonna fucking do it, so let's fucking do it! So we're, uh, getting spooned by Vincent. I'm familiar with this game, but it seems as though Vincent isn't playing coy. His furred hands rub my back, knead my muscles, and calm my pains. He knows I'm awake as he leans up and over to get closer to my ear. His soft breath pushes, brushes past me as he whispers, his voice filled with pain and regret. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be the way that I am. I just, I don't want to see you hurt. I just, I just. He leans down to kiss me. Oh my god. Wait, what the fuck? Welcome back to this episode. Things are already fucking weird. We kiss. It is likely a sweet, gentle kiss from Vincent, but it is rather painful. What? His tongue has sharp, rasping points and is rough. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. You'd think it'd feel good, but it's more alarming than pleasant. <laughs> Either way, I bite the bullet, grit my teeth, and enjoy the affection, even if it is lost in translation. It's the intent that counts, and right now Vincent is full of intentions. <laughs> I feel his intentions growing as he presses up against me. My god. His furred torso drapes around me. I can feel his bristled hair tickle and touch my flesh. His paw, hand, whatever, is playing with my skin, learning and feeling where my bones and ribs are, where my muscles tense and jump from his sweet touch. In typical cat fashion, he begins to knead my, at my softer areas. Vincent's throat vibrates next to my ear. It's calming in a strange way, and I let myself relax. I drop the hesitation that is built up inside of me, and I enjoy the moment. His cheek brushes against mine, rubbing and headbutting me like a normal happy cat. Um... Oh, jeez, I was wondering, I was like, what the fuck? And that, uh, there's a period there where there should be a comma! Semantics rage! I sigh with content and look out the window. I see a hooded figure! Holy shit, that is terrifying! A hooded figure staring at us! Vincent. He exhales his hormone-filled afterglow. What? There's someone outside! There's always someone outside. Oh, I mean, they're watching us, and they're wearing a mask. Quick like a, the cat he is, he sits up and looks out the rainy window. Son of a... He jumps out of the bed, his tail dances behind him like a ribbon. His face presses to the window and watches the masked figure run away into the night. That is fucking creepy as shit! Those creeps. Who was that? I don't have x-ray vision, that's why they wear masks. It's just someone from the insightful trying to running, trying running reconnaissance on you. On me. In a mocking tone, Vincent cops me. On me! <laughs> that's why he says it, his shoulders droop and his head hangs. Sorry, it's just easy for me to go back to being an bitchy. <laughs> it's your defense mechanism. It's more than just that. I have to stay vigilant. And the moment I drop my guard, masked monsters come looking through my window. I can't even let me guard down. <laughs> we shouldn't have done that. I don't think it matters if we did or didn't. Uh, they would be watching regardless. Well, I guess it's time to get ready for the night. Oh, that leaves a feeling of regret about it. That's never the way to leave a moment like that. In the library, before it opens, the four of us stand in a circle. There we are! Fun fact, I actually saw a video of someone playing this game in an earlier build before I even started to do ver furry visual novels. It was back when I was searching for which ones to do, uh, and I didn't catch the name of this one at the time. Uh, I, I saw the old sprite for Vincent, which, uh, show it, future me, uh, looks 
fucking disgusting and or disturbing. It's goofy as shit. Like, I, I rag on this game a little bit because of its art style, but it's it's not near as bad as it apparently was. And so, uh, I all I remember is seeing that fucking art for Vincent and thinking, I will never play that game if it looks like that. I do not want to play a game that has an art style that looks that fucking horrendous. And, uh, turns out I actually did play that game, and I never know it. I never knew it because of that, but I wound up seeing that picture again, and I was like, holy shit, I've been playing this game, and it, it looks a lot better than it used to, that's for fucking sure. Just got an email from Dinewolf saying that there's going to be a short delay on extracurricular activities. Uh, I'm going to read the email later, but mm, of course there's a fucking short delay. <laughs> there always is. I mean, he just moved into a new fucking house. Of course there's going to be a fucking delay. Anyway, a mini conference before the night starts. What are our leads for tonight? We'll start with you, Kitako. Kitako see large heat piles. Many talks being done. One big talk at Cabin in Wood. Odd heat pattern, Mr. Charlie is in town. Mr. Charlie went to a heat in pattern, Mr. Cody. Any other odd movements in town? No, just movement of Mr. Martin to library in large heat at night. Don't be sassy. <laughs> Kitaka can see the entire town? Wait, did Kitaka watch us do the deed last night? There are more eyes on me than I think. It sends a rather strange feeling through me, like I'm naked. There shouldn't be a fucking quote mark at the end of that! Longma, what do you have to report? Oh dear, oh my, there's a missing citizen report that is still being, uh, um, investigated. From when? Last night, uh, after Martin was pronounced, oh, oh yes, alive, uh, you left and I received the request to find the missing citizen. Last known whereabouts were at, you know, heading to the cabin. Well, that seems clear cut. The outsider is at one and the outsider is at one and a half kills before it was taken down. Inform the police that the outsider did more than just hurt Martin. Oh dear, yes. Uh, only other issues were typical uh, disputes. All right, you Martin. Well, I received a complaint about an upstairs neighbor and something about water. Well, that's just a typical dispute. It's part of living here in Blackgate. You're not gonna be, get along with your. You're not gonna get along with your neighbor. We're all too different, and it's just. It's better just to utterly ignore those differences. Push whatever bothers you deep down, because we're all dealing with it. Shouldn't citizens talk about these issues? No. The last thing we want is everyone saying they're more important than the creature next to them. That their needs are more important than the needs of anyone else. It quickly leads to violence if you're no longer willing to tolerate. What's rule number four? In unison, Longma and Kitako speak. Accept, don't accept our differences. To, to tolerate them so we can work together. It seems messed up. What's rule number one, two, and three? Alright. Anything else? Just to lead on uh, those missing tarot cards. Vincent tilts his head. His eyes go wide. An informant said that someone with metal arm with a metal arm has them. Flint. Flint. Mr. Flint or Mr. Mallow. Who's Flint? He's a green face, many teeth, leathery skin free for all our <laughs> Jesus Christ. I think I remember seeing an alligator man with a metal arm at the bar once. You kind of go numb to how many strange creatures you see in this place. It's completely bizarre that I'm even questioning whether or not I remember an alligator man with a metal arm in a bar. Who's Mallow? Mallow is this thing with a metal arm. He lost it working down in the mines. He's too peppy for my taste. Kitako, can you tell me where Flint and Mallow are right now? Oh, God. Oh, God. Still not feeling good. <laughs> Taco does a quick look around. He points at the wall and into a bookshelf. Mr. Flint at Alibine Bar. Mr. Mallow go work. Mr. Mallow eat at Yum Hot Sugar Store. What? In a tired tone, Vincent corrects Kitako. It's called a bakery. Martin, I need you to go question the metal arms. Kitako, stay around and keep an eye out for any large gatherings. Long well look into that missing citizen. Who are you? I handle everything else. It's a lot more than you think. Everyone has their job, so let's do it. Who should I seek out? Uh, well... <clears throat> Mallow's at his work. Um, and going to an alley behind the bar is kind of seedy as fuck. So, uh, let's go do that. That sounds more interesting. I'll go seek out Flint. 
And we all know what we're gonna what we're doing, so stop wasting time and get out there. I leave the library and head towards the bar. Well, this has certainly been an interesting morning. Um, the rain leaves a heavy feeling. It's not your like your typical rain. It makes things feel empty. That might be because the town is quiet. I doubt most monsters like the rain or that some really enjoy it. I take a turn around building and I'm on a main street. I don't think it's even called Main Street. There aren't many street signs to begin with, and even then, they're rusted past ineligible. In 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 ineligible? Intelligible? Can't read them! <laughs> I find the bar closed, but I find the alley open. Waiting under an awning is this crocodile man with a metal arm. He's waiting for something. Oh, Jesus. Flint? He quickly turns, and I see the alligator teeth stick out in some spots. Um... Yes, who are you? Wait, you're that human? Yes, I am. I, I need to ask you a few questions regarding Sooth. It wasn't me, and you have no proof it was. He's very quick to defend himself. I never said it was you. I, I just want to know if you happen to have those, the, those tarot cards. Cards? Yes, I have playing cards. You can go get a pair at the store. I'm not playing cards. Tarot cards. They're different, and you don't play with them. I have no idea. Well, the tip I got said that you do. Well, it looks like you're not going to leave me alone. To get you off my tail, let, you f let me fill you in on what's probably going on. I ain't got no stupid cards. That's not my style. What I do now, what I do know, is someone paid a lot of money to have Sooth killed. Too much money to make sense. Alright, yes, I got the contract, but I'm not the murdering type. I didn't take it. Before you go digging up dirt on me, yes, I've killed for money before. That time was different. The target was a murderer to begin with. It was a justice killing, which is fine in my books. I didn't see anything right in killing Sue, so I didn't take the job. I'm not that kind of executioner. I really should have. It was almost too much to pass up. He wanted Sue to be killed. What do you mean, executioner? You don't ask who or where the contract comes from. That's just bad business. If I had to guess, it's someone with a huge bankroll to put up those kinds of numbers. So someone else to do the someone else to the job. What? So someone else took the job, I imagine is what that meant to say. There's there's technically three executioners in town. I don't consider myself one, but I still get the offers to. I only accept it if it's the right thing to do. The other two aren't motivated that way. Before you ask, no, I don't know who they are. They wear masks to hide oh Jesus who they are, and even then it's in bad business to find out. It has a lot of useful information. Why doesn't the library already know about all this? I'm not talking to any of them. The only reason I'm telling you is because you're a human. I don't want to get on your bad side. I caught wind of what happens when someone gets on your bad side. It's an odd thing to say. Since I did let you in on a secret, a favor if you will, can you do me a favor? Depends on the favor. It ain't right now. I got some deals going on and I'd rather not them not get interrupted. If a fight breaks out, it's not just because of me. Just get my back if a trial is needed. Fine. Now I need some space to conduct some business. Is that really all you can tell me? I can tell you more, but I don't have good evidence. Well, thanks for your help. I leave him be. He's not that bad of a dude. Except for the whole illegal business he's running. Don't ask, don't tell. They, there's more parties involved in this whole Sooth murder. The killer for hire and the one who put, all, put a hit out. What's more important, though, my initial gut reaction is to go to the one who put out the hit in the first place. That way I can find a motive behind all of this. I'm back at the rain and heading towards the library, just as though I felt I've been watched or followed for the past week. I finally feel as though no one's watching me, no one's following me. It, I wouldn't feel that way if someone with a fucking mask and hood was watching through the window as a cat fucked me in the ass. That is way too specific to be applicable to my real life, but goddamn, dude, I would not feel left alone. It's been so extreme that I'm noticing and remembering what normal feels like. Normal feels safe. Too safe. Normal feels like I'm, I was the idiot to think that I was already, always that safe. I look around just to make sure. The streets are empty. Off in the dark distance, I can see a telltale colors of red and blue bounce off the wet buildings, reflecting and bending to fill in an odd color requirement that's sorely missing from this drab town. The police are busy, that's a good thing, I think. I make it to the library and open the door. I wipe my shoes on the welcome mat, and for the first time, the library is a library. It's quiet. Vincent sits at the desk looking over paperwork, his fur is wet. 
What? Cats hate water. I do. You followed me, didn't you? Why would I waste my time watching out for you? With a sigh and a drop of character, Vincent looks up from his book. I notice it's upside down. Of course I followed you. I was hoping you didn't notice. I noticed when you weren't following me. If that's an interesting ability. <laughs> Ow, God, my fucking foot. Everything is always about if something is there. No one pays attention to the absence. You did all right out there. A bit lenient with your approach and fair with your questions. You trust too readily to believe what they're telling you is the truth. We have something else to do now, though. We do? Sue's funeral is tonight, and I'm doing the funeral rites. You're welcome to come, although it's not mandatory. Vincent seemed mute, seems muted. I'll join. It would mean a lot, lot to Sooth if you did. I figured you'd be cynical about death and say that it doesn't matter. That's the problem. It does matter. It matters all too much. Vincent gets up from his seat and heads into the back room. He comes back with an interesting looking tome. The leather, thick pages, and old lock give it a magical feel. In Sooth's culture, they write messages to the departed and plant the book as the headstone. The book with the book with degrade away I mean, will degrade away into the ground, bringing with it the messages written in the pages. It's quite poetic. Most citizens of Blackgate have specific rules they would like for their burial. Rites and rituals for death are more important than those for life. It doesn't matter how it begins; it's just how it ends. Vincent is more thoughtful and kind tonight. We should head to the cemetery. God damn, there are times where I honest to God think that that is a picture from my hometown. Because it, it just, it looks way too fucking similar. I head outside and follow Vincent towards the cemetery. The rain is not as kind as I'd like. I have to duck and dodge from getting wet. How the fuck are you, uh, imagine from, yeah. Thankfully the library is not far from the cemetery. Well this is ominous as shit. Vincent was right, it's not really a cemetery. Gah. Vincent was right. It's not really a cemetery, since uh, typical gravestones are very rare. Markings of graves are more dependent on cultural backgrounds. I see no distinct cross, but a uh, few headstone, a uh, few stone headstones, spires, walled trees, you know, stone circles, urns, boxes, and ashes are arranged in rows. The strangest landmark is a rusting, a rusting yellow airplane. Vincent stops at it and lays down a picture of some far-off place by by Wells. We make it to Sooth's grave. The dirt is still raised and disturbed. Oh God, <laughs> this is a pairing, isn't it? There are a handful of creatures surrounding the grave. I see Gruff in the crowd. They reach over the dirt and write into a book held out by the cat. He recites a pray like a pray like phrase and flips the page so someone else can write. Your words for Sooth will be with him. He immediately flips the page so no one can read it. A few creatures talk amongst themselves and mention me here. I can't tell if it's positive or negative. I stay on the outside and watch as the line filters towards Vincent and his book. Once the group thins out, I go in line. It's not that I want to, it's that it's expected. It's like giving your aunt uh, that you've only ever seen once a hug. <laughs> it's etiquette. I walk up and Vincent asks me, Would you like to sign? Yes. I am given a fresh page to write in, so I start. Um, well, I never met him, so I barely knew you. Barely knew you, but even I could tell that you were trying to do what is right. This place doesn't make it easy. One option, what you leave behind. The note, then that key will be cherished. What you leave behind is the hope of making a better town. I'll be the hope. I'll protect others. Uh, I don't want to. I don't th be the hope. That's very. Uh, uh, I'll protect the town, as you said I would. I'll make this place better. Vincent recites. Your words for sooth will be with him. He flips the page and reveals another empty page. I see Gruff in a different part of the graveyard. I stick by Vincent and wait for the stragglers. The rain is demanding as we stand and wait. Oh, there's the guy from the bar. From behind a tree, Alan st stumbles over a root as he approaches. Alan knew Sith too. Sooth too. What is he doing here? 
I stand a few steps back and watch the cat and dog stare at each other. Their silence is filled with rain, and it says everything between them. Vincent looks away and opens the book for the wet wolf. He takes his time to write a message. He finishes and hangs his head to turn. An orange cat flips the page, and a note floats out and, around, and lands on the corner into the soft, muddy dirt. What's that? Alan does a double take, and he closes his eyes, rubs the bridge of his snout, and looks again. Almost like a cartoon, his, he, tra his he eyes travel up to ours. Groff hurries towards us as he saw the note. What the fuck was that shuffle? Goddamn. What's that? Vincent picks it up reluctantly. He reads it over. God damn it. It's a note for the four of us. The four of us specifically. Is his game not done? What does it, what does it say? If one of you should have the key, then you are the new four, my big four. You must save this place. In the basement of Town Hall is the Black Gate. The, that key opens the way. Martin must reach the gate, or everything was for nothing. What key? There's more on the back. His orange furred hands flip the card over. To Vincent, forgive yourself. To Alan, find revenge. To Gruff, kill him. Kill him. To Martin, save us. I stand there in awe. Uh, last wishes from a dead man, turtle, monster, whatever. Vincent just starts laughing. There are in-between chuckles and snorts as Vincent tries to talk. <laughs> they killed you because they didn't want us to come together? A drunk, a washed-up cop, a messiah complex, invalid, and an asshole. Way to go, Sooth. You got him. Way to go. Way to go. <laughs> Vinny, shut up. He died for this. So what? Many have died because of his predictions. Look at, look around you. This isn't a game. Sooth was right about everything he said, though. He warned everyone, and no one listened. Yes, you did listen, didn't you? You heard him loud and clear, and it was filled with lies to hurt you. Saying you could have saved everyone, that it was your fault, his abusive and twisted fortune-telling. It's like they were arguing, just like that, they were arguing with each other. I don't know what to make of it. It feels awkward. You're mistaken. That's what he said to you. I know that, but it was his fault. That's why I kicked him out. Alan, st says, Alan stays silent. Alan stays quiet and looks like he just wants to run away. Because he set you up with Amelia? You were jealous. It's attack Vincent again, isn't it? Yeah, so what if I was jealous? Is it a crime to want to feel better about living here? I had no family, no love, no one to take care of, no real pleasure. Kitako? Kitako is a job and not a family. Kitako and Amelia are the reason why everything happened. Sooth was right that it was your fault. But we can change things. We can make sure it never happens again. Look, we're in the same situation, except it's Martin this time. How do I learn from history? How do, I, how do I avoid the same mistakes of trying to be happy? How do I protect Martin on my own? It's always about you. Vincent is about to retort and I speak up. This fighting isn't getting us anywhere. Let us not fight. It will only hurt all of us more. Let us just do what the card says. If we were wrong not to listen before, why not listen now? With what? Getting into the, bla the Black Gate with Martin? It says we need some key, too. I hate to break it to you, but I don't know what key he's talking about. Along the same lines, I have no idea what or where the Black Gate is, let alone what it looks like. I just know the basics. And I know that it's the end of this fucking episode, so thank you all very much for watching this very strange episode. I wish I could have stopped in, at the end of a scene instead of in the middle of one like here, but unfortunately, I don't have that luxury. So, th see you on the next one, ladies and gentlemen. Um, what the fuck is my outro? And I, I, uh, thank you all very much for watching uh, this episode of Blackgate. On the next one, we'll continue with this uh, really ruined funeral. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, I have been the trained professional speaking for the voices in my head when I say, until next time, fare thee well. Bye, everyone! That was fucking